Okay, we pray. Good and gracious Lord, we come to thank you again for the opportunity to be together, to be brothers and sisters in Christ through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for your word that is meant to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So brighten us this day through that word that we may be enriched by thy grace and go forth to glorify thy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, um, I want to start with Malachi 3, 5, because we, we finished through 4, and 5 kind of leads us into the whole rest of this thing. So, uh, Malachi 3, 1 through 4 was the announcement that this Elijah was going to come. One like Elijah. This would be John the Baptist, remember? And, um, and talk about his work. Um, and then in verse 5, and remember, this is God talking. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired worker in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, against those who thrust aside the sojourner. And do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. <laughs> I think it's kind of interesting because he starts out in verse 5, and it sounds like, I'm coming to knock you all off. <laughs> okay? But he ends by saying, do not fear me. So what, what happens here, what is very interesting is, we're looking at this third point now, and as he announces the ministry of John the Baptist, and talks about the message of repentance that's going to be forthcoming, what he's in, really introducing is introducing the whole concept of the New Testament era. And he's talking about it from the coming of John the Baptist to the last day. All in one little heap. And so, he is going to come, and we know he comes as the Savior, but he also comes. When he comes, he is implementing justice. Right? Why did Jesus die on the cross? To justify us. To pay the debt of our sins. He was implementing justice. So I want to turn to one passage here, and then we'll come back to Malachi. Ah, yes, uh, John 3. This, was, uh, this talks about this judgment a little bit of, of, about Jesus. Why would you sit there and say he's a judge? And, and uh, I just heard that, what was I listening to yesterday? It was about the cleansing of the temple again, uh, somewhere, and uh, how Jesus cleansed the temple. But John 3, and <laughs> we know verse 16. But let's just go down through uh, uh, 19 will be sufficient. Okay, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. If he would have done that, we'd all been lost. Okay, but in order that the world might be saved through him, through the death, his death on the cross. Now, here comes the key part. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe in him is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world. And people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. Now, when we looked at this at the seminary, it was kind of interesting, because what the point here is, once the gospel is proclaimed to a person, they're judged. If they believe, they have salvation. If they don't believe, they're lost. Now, what's interesting about this judgment, however, is it's not permanent. Okay? Because you can still repent of your sins. Okay? So the concept is, whoever does not believe is already condemned. But that's not a permanent condemnation, so long as they repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. But once the death comes, it's too late. Okay? I had a, an opportunity when I was on Vicarage. Actually, it was the only funeral I did. The pastor had me do it because I had ministered to this lady. But... A member came in and said, I've got a dear friend who's dying of cancer. And uh, so he gave me this lady, and I visited her for two weeks. Um, she was a non-practicing Catholic. But anyway, she uh, came to faith. 
And then I met the mother at the beginning of the you know viewing, and she said, uh, "Could you please pray for my daughter that she might not spend a lot of time in purgatory mm -hmm. and go to heaven?" She was a devout Catholic, yeah. and I said, "I said, well, you know." We believe that because she had faith in Jesus Christ, she's already in heaven, but why don't we pray and thank God that he brought her to faith and that she now rests in the arms of Jesus. And she was satisfied with that. Okay. But, so, once, once the death hands forth the judgment, okay? Once you die, that's it. And so everything is determined. But I just want you to understand that. So when it's talking about this here, you know, he's saying, I'm bringing judgment. As he's coming and people, he's proclaiming the word, if they rebel, they stand condemned at that time. Okay? And, and they're lost. And this is why you've got this passage, I think it's like Matthew 23, something like that, 34, something like that. But where Jesus, and he's, he's if you've been to uh, Israel, he's on the hillside looking at his town, so to speak. And he, he says, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you sent the prophets and stoned those. Said, I said to you, how often I wanted to gather you together as a hen gathers her chicks, and you would not. And I can see, if you remember this commercial television, there used to be a, a commercial about pollution in India. India, India is sitting on a horse, mm -hmm. looking, seeing the pollution, a tear comes down. I can just see Jesus. Tears coming down his cheeks because he really wanted to save these people. But they would not. <laughs> okay? And oh, that you and I could have such a heart for souls, you know? Even the Apostle Paul, I'm a off the track here, but what, remember what the Apostle Paul said about his Jews? He said, If I could die and go to hell, that they would be going to heaven, I would be willing to do it. That's love. But, but that's love. But he knew that wouldn't work. Yeah. But you might say that if you have children and say, I don't if I, if. <laughs> you know, there, there's, there's this heart, you know, weighing on the heart. But really for us to think about that in our ministry, because going back to last week, we can talk about a lot of stuff, correcting the world, but that's what Satan wants us to do is continue to say, this is wrong, this is wrong. And instead of saying, I gave you a gospel, Go out there and proclaim it. Because what the world needs, eat, not, needs is a change of heart. Not more laws, but a change of heart. And that comes only through God working through his word. Okay, that's the sermon for today. Now we go on. Verse 6 of Malachi 3. My youngest granddaughter was baptized at New Song Sunday, and uh, I, we were left wanting. I guess is all I can say. Just the whole new yeah. way they do things, and no law, no gospel, no very little scripture. And then it was taken out of context. They didn't go with verses above it. That just. I was very disgruntled about all <laughs> that. sermon gave me more than what they gave me. <laughs> Okay. So, well, and that's the thing. I, I mean, I, we were on vacation, and we went, had gone down to Panama City. Well, away from, we were about 40 miles from, 40 minutes from Panama City, right along the Gulf Shore. And it, it actually, that's, those condos are destroyed now by the hurricane. But anyway, we... Uh, Forty minutes was the closest church, so it was a. I don't want to. I don't want to say the nomination. That's not fair. We went to this church, okay. So the kids played games during Sunday school. We went to adult Bible class and we talked about suicide from a psychological perspective. We never. They never opened the Bible. They never said anything about God. It was just all this, you know, kind of gibberish for an hour. Okay. Then we went to, to church, and it happened to be the ladies, they got a group, kind of like L.W. Mill, but it was a different mission group. They got a cross in the front, but the only time throughout the service that Jesus was mentioned was when the preacher said, 
we know Jesus was a great teacher. Mm, and he said. <laughs> so then the next week we were up at, in Birmingham, Alabama. And we went to Missouri Synod Church. And the Bible class it was awesome. It was really awesome. There was a lay leader. And at the end he said, what do you do for a living? I said, I'm a pastor. He said, well, why didn't you help me out? I said, you were doing a fine job. <laughs> <laughs> but you had that. And then you had the Lord's Supper. And the message of the gospel, and you sit there, and once you do that, once you see that comparison, you we should be so thankful. Yes, yes, we should be so thankful. You need to, and actually, it's, it's okay if you go to other churches sometimes and listen because you really need to see the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, to see how rich we are. Yeah. So, and then I've had people who didn't like, didn't believe in infant baptism and stuff, and I would send them to a church then in town that I knew kind of fit their doctrinal understanding, but also one where first and foremost they would meet Jesus. There were some with uh, Christian or churches in town, they would not meet Jesus. But there's other ones, they would meet Jesus. They would hear about the crucifixion. Yeah, right. yeah, would, you know what I mean. Okay, so anyway, now oh, verse 6, and this goes back to the opening, really. For I the Lord do not change. Malachi 3.6 Therefore, old children of Jacob are not consumed. Now you hear what he's saying? So he, we, went, we began with he assures them of his love. Then he talks about his displeasure with them and, and the justice that's going to be upon them. Well, that's a call for repentance connected with this. But he goes back to this and he says, I want you to know I have not changed. I, I do not want you to be consumed. You think I'm against you, but I'm for you. I don't want you to be consumed. His love is everlasting. From the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. So here's that call to repentance, okay? I haven't moved. You have. You have heard that statement, Ray, right? If you wonder where Jesus is, then just ask who moved. And we moved. He's been stationary. He's been that prodigal son, or the, in the story of the prodigal son, the father, who's simply waiting. Yeah. And we can understand that waiting because as parents, and we've had some kids, and you like to bop them over the head, and then you know it's not going to work. You sit there and you pray. And you wait with open arms, just hoping one day we can really wrap this all around uh, again. So anyway, <clears throat> return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, how shall we return? Okay, how do we do this? What's the process? Okay, um, what's the process? I want to stop here a second and just note the, the, the concept that has to be understood when we talk about repentance, is not, and this would be with the world, I guess. We deal with the, I'm pointing to you because we talked about the, the uh, <laughs> I'm not picking on him, it's just that he brought that up last week. We just can get so engrossed in the matters of the world, we forget what our job is. But it's so easy for us to look at the sins of the world that we forgot our own sins. Mm -hmm. Try to remove the splinter out of somebody's eye when we have a log in our own. Right, right. <laughs> yep. right. And a lot of ours, if you remember from the catechism, there's sins of commission and sins of omission. Remember that? Oh, yeah, the omission part really gets and that's the one, <laughs> And that's the one we have the most trouble with. We, we say, I haven't done anything wrong. And God says, What have you done right? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And Luther was good about that. You know, yeah, he do not hate nor harm your neighbor in his body, but help and befriend him. These commandments always have the positive. Okay. And yet, then, are we practicing the positive? We we're so guilty of omission. But anyone's going to also say, I had this big debate. I, I wrote into the synodical office years ago when the, the LW came out. I, I was, <laughs> it was fine. But I did not like that confession of sins. Uh, hold on, I can't remember how it goes now. Um, I knew I should have brought the hymn though. Uh, we, it starts we. Um, instead of I. Instead of I. Instead of I, a poor miserable say, 
We have sinned against you. We have sinned against you, thought Lord D. I don't know about you, but that makes me a lot more comfortable. <laughs> We're all in this together. <laughs> it's no big thing. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's speaking in the yeah. fire, not just your own. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, and they're doing it. Now oh, it's yeah. okay, right? So uh, we confess that we are sinful and you know, unclean. It's, it, we, and I, I brought it up, and, and their answer to me was, well, theologically it's not good, but we did it because of grammar. Because before it says, oh, let us confess yes. our sins to God our Father. So since you said us, that. now we have to say we. Mm -hmm. So they should have changed that line. They could have changed that line. Yeah. Let each of us confess our sins. Yeah. But I just, it's, a, it's an interesting point. Because when you hear, when you hear like David in Psalm uh, 30, uh, 51, he says, you know, I have sinned against you. I. And when we get to the I, that's where the healing can come, you know. I can't even justify, um, well, I've told you, I, my, one of my big places to be a, a trouble with sin is driving. And I get this time when people cut in front of me. I want to step on my gas and really hit them in the rear end. And I still remember my wife, Jerry, saying, Roger, Roger, God's testing you. And I say, I don't want to be tested. <laughs> I just want to get you. <laughs> but see, these things, you know, these things, they, they crop up for us all. And so that when you're, looking, when you're looking at the mirror of the law, it's not good for us to sit there and say, well, I, I might be in the front, but look at all these people that are also behind me. It's me. It's a personal thing. I have sinned against the Lord. And so here he's trying to get them each to see how they have sinned against God. Now what's interesting in verse 8, uh, how shall we return? Then God says, will man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, how have we robbed you? In your tithes and contributions. Now stop there. How do we rob God? We're not giving up what we should of ourselves and of our... Our first fruits. Right. Who he has made us to be and what he has given us to use. When we fail to, I mean, so we all have, here, we all have different ta talents. We all have different talents, okay? I think I told you I hate art. You know, I used to do that in VBS. I said, well, well what would you do for us? I said, I'll do anything except art. I absolutely hate it. I, I, do, I just and I I'm, it's because I, and I'm not saying it's bad. I say I don't like it because I'm not good at it. And I get the more I try to do it, the more frustrated I get. So I could end up with a paper with all this because I got mad. <laughs> but we all have talents, of, and this is what he's saying. How do you rob God? Well, God says I blessed you. I blessed each and every one of you, not only with money or mat other materials, but I have blessed you with special gifts talents, and abilities. And you find out what that is. And part of doing that is, I, I've got a couple of grandchildren, and it's always the first one, so I don't know if that's connected with the first one. They don't try a lot of things because they're afraid of failure. Mm -hmm. it's, got, it's got to be just, yeah, just right. And I would say to them, I'd say, no. I said, the only way you guys fail is if you don't try. If you try, and then you realize that's not your gift. You've learned. You've learned. I had a lady, because I called on her, because we, we used to go outreach calls, and I, I asked her to, to uh, go out on outreach calls. And she was so gifted in art. She was gifted in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, in personal day. So I thought, okay. So four weeks in, she comes. I can still see her coming in. She's got the book in her hand. She says, Pastor, I can't do this. And she said, I can't do this because before we go out, I get sick. I start throwing up. I don't know these people were calling on. And I said, I wouldn't be ashamed. You know better who you are. You know that's not your gift to share the good news with a, a stranger. But you do it otherwise. So just use the abilities you have. Okay? Um, some of us are really good with little kids, you know. Um, 
Some of us, not so good. Uh, <laughs> some of us can play the organ, some of us can't. Some of us can sing, some of us can't. You know, but, but God's saying here, don't rob me. I blessed you. And the people of Malachi are stealing from They're using their best blessings and they're using them for themselves. Not for God, not to honor God, not to bring glory to God. And that's why he says you're robbing. So this is a concept of stewardship, but not just the money, even though it showed in the offerings, but it's everything. Everything. We are, you know, count your blessings. Uh, my favorite passage is, I am what I am by the grace of God, and God's grace was not wasted on me. I labored harder than all the other apostles. Nevertheless, it was not I, but God's grace in me. That was the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. And he said, it's all about grace. And yeah, he didn't say this in the passage. I, yeah, I might have been the greatest missionary that ever lived. But it's all about God's grace. I just did what God gave me. Right, so, but the more you use your gifts, the more they grow. Then the more they grow, yes. So therefore, like Paul. Right. The more he used the gifts God gave him, the more they grew. Right, right. And I am fine, I, I find I get so excited seeing my grandkids because I can see them starting to learn who God made them to be. Yeah. Now we got one, uh, one of the older grandchildren, she doesn't try a lot because she, she does not like failure. But she likes to bake. <laughs> and now they're doing some bake drive. We just heard another girl raising money for something they're making. I don't know, 400 cupcakes this weekend, so I don't know what they're doing. Wow. And selling them. <laughs> because, and she likes doing that. Okay? But she, she is not good at volleyball. <laughs> I know, she did it one year. I never said anything. I said, it's good you're trying. <laughs> okay, will God, will you rob God? You are robbing me, but you say, how have we robbed me? In your ties and contributions. And so this is also an interesting concept. You know, we always talk about with tithing, but in the Old Testament, they gave more than 10%. I was going to say, my brother-in-law always said, you're not giving until you give more than the tithe. Yeah, yeah. That was, it was uh -huh. Amish. Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, really, yeah. 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 So in your tithes and offerings, <laughs> you are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. And so what God is saying is, if you're not going to use my grace, and you're going to abuse it, I will remove it. Yeah. Think about that. And that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... He does, he does. Why waste it on you? If you're not well, I, but, I, but it's interesting, while well, he doesn't really remove it, I mean, it's still there, you know what I'm saying? But he's strongly saying here, hey guys, I have blessed you, and you're using all my blessings for yourself. Yeah. And you've missed out. And again, it's, it's a process, if you remember, this is about 100 years after they came back. Mm -hmm. Right? And one of the things we have problems with is the longer we go, the more apt we are to forget. Okay. Even in the church, when you think about it, um, you know, the... There's studies that the older a church become, a congregation becomes, the harder it is to stay firm. Because they go to a tradition, and, and, tra and I'm not saying worship style, right? but they go to a tradition. This is what we've always done. You know? And I've always loved it when new people come into church and say, Gene, why are we doing this? And they don't know why. Because we've always done it that way. Well, that doesn't mean you couldn't. Do it differently. <laughs> you know, so I always, I find that interesting. It's a good question. Okay? It's a good question. And, I, and I'm not talking about worship style. I'm talking, just talking about everything. You know, just other stuff. You know, Why is this group meeting on Tuesdays? That's what we always did. Well, you only have two people now. If you go to Wednesday nights, maybe you'd have 50 people. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Bring the full tithe into the storehouse. And the storehouse was that place where they, they kept the food for the priests and Levites, you know, and uh, kept it for them as, as their, uh, their reimbursement for the services they offered. And thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. 
Yeah, need, not, yes. not want. It's yes. need. So, what would you say about that? What is? What would you say that promise is? Because this, this is where people would say, this, they would come up with the theology of prosperity. Yes. You give me your five hundred dollars, and in the three weeks you're going to have five thousand. I mean, where else are you going to get interest like that? So they use this as a theology of prosperity, but what is it really? I'll give you everything you need. Yeah. It's really a theology of faith. Will God provide? This is why the word test is in there, right? Put me to the test. See if I won't take care of And you said me, right? I will take care I'm not promising you prosperity. And I, when I read again, went over this again this morning, I thought about the widow of Zarephath. Now she did that. The next day, she didn't have a cupboard full of food. She still had that little jar. Okay, that's fine. She had enough. And God will take care of it. And, and then the other big thing, and this happens because you know, we're in this world today, what is it that I need and what is it that I want? We get so confused with wanting things we don't need. Do I really need, you know? My wife gets frustrated. I still, I'm wearing my kids' t-shirts from high school. And they're kind of raggedy and they're old and people know it because there's 1999 on there. <laughs> they're getting harder to fit now. But anyway, <laughs> I said, like, what are I at home, I'm going to work, chop some wood or something. Why do I need a new shirt? In fact, I feel more comfortable in the old stuff. Right? I got it all broken by now. I mean, the kids are buying jeans with holes in them already, so why can't I wear them? You've heard those holes. I've heard those holes. Okay, but, but so the concept here is he is trying to teach us about faith. You trust in me by, sh by giving, by showing your faith, and I'll take care of you. See, it's always interesting, it, and I, I sat at a meeting last night at the church, as circuit visitor, I was called to go over there and talk to him. It's interesting, church and money. Oh, yeah. I swear, the church does not know what to do with money. They don't know what to do with it if they got a lot of it, and they don't know what to do with it if they don't have any of it. They simply don't know how to use money. And the question was, hey, well, if we yeah, do well, this, how is God going to take care of us? Instead, if we can do it, God will take, take care, care of us. Yeah. And bless us. And bless us. And, it, and it, it, wasn't, it was something that was pretty obvious that they should do. You know, and I was just there to make sure the, there was no storm. <laughs> I was calling to make sure there was no storm. Um, but anyway, but... but so when we, when we talk about stuff, if, if it's really, if we, we know it's a calling from God to do a certain ministry, to do a certain thing, God will take care of it. He will take care of it. Um, I, I still have my stomach, because I, I think I told you about my mom already. My mom, boy, when we had our fourth child, she said, Roger, how are you going to do this? So then she's pregnant a fifth time, and I didn't tell mom until she saw her pregnant first. <laughs> So, well, Roger, how are you, you going to take care of all these kids? I said, I don't know. I'm not smart enough for that. I know God gave me the child, and I know God said he'll provide. I know I have to be a good steward of what he gives me. But it's God's job to buy. If God gave, God will bless what he gave, right? He's not going to sit there and say, leave you out in the cold. And... Uh, so then my, my principal son now says, when they're all grown up, he said, oh, Dad, you, you and Mom are now loaded. You got us all through braces in school. Now you got, you're loaded. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, also, cause I, I always have to laugh at this because I tell you how much it costs to raise a child. Mm -hmm. if, I, if that's really what it costs, I would be bankrupt. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, they know what... They want to stop people having children. Well, no, I know. 
Yeah, I just kept saying, oh, another tax. No, I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the way to look at this it. Was good okay. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, but just so let's. So, 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 what he's doing here is he's going back to this. You know, they, they were out of captivity for a hundred years, and now they forgot how God provided. Think about the people of Israel in the wilderness. How long did it take? Oh, not very long, and all of a sudden they got the same food every morning, every evening, and got tired of it. Oh, we were better off when we were slaves. See, we forget. We forget, and God has led and blessed us in so many ways. And that goes back to the Bible class I led the other one by the back of. That's still my favorite Thanksgiving passage. Though the grapevines don't produce grapes, and though there's no sheep in the field, and there's no apples on this apple tree, yet I give thanks because God's my Savior. And that's what we, He gave us what we needed. Mm -hmm. Eternal salvation. Anyway, that's exciting, right? Woo! Um, and thereby put to rest, it says 11. If I, yeah, okay, verse 11, I will rebuke the devourer for you, so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soul, and your vine in the field shall not fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. Then all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. And there is that concept of trusting. He says, I will protect, and I will provide. And it wouldn't necessarily be a lot... I, my, my folks, uh, when I was in 6th and 7th grade, after my 6th and 7th grade years of school, both my parents had major surgeries. Um, I don't know what they were, cysts and I don't know, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, they're both in the hospital. And, and uh, my sister and I, uh, she learned to cook and I learned to clean. I was the cleaner and, and the clothes washer and stuff, and she did the cooking. So I'm not real good at cooking, but boy, I can do a mean clean shirt. <laughs> um, but anyway, during that time, and I, I remember this vividly, there were times, and maybe that's why my mom was kind of freakish, because there were times where they scraped pennies together to get us milk to drink. I remember that. But we always had enough. We never went hungry. I don't know what kids today do. When, when we ran low on money, we sold pop bottles. Oh. Collected pop bottles. Yes, you can't do that yeah. To get milk or something, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we work together as a family. Right, right. The children don't do that now, and they don't even sometimes feel like they're a part of the family. Right. They, they're disassociated That's with it. They don't have chores, and right. they don't feel like they belong. And so now we got all these problems with these yeah. They do. They just don't feel like easily. Well, because yeah. they deserve something. We always taught our kids, if you're living in the house, you're part of the workforce. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I can still see it. They'll talk about it. Jerry would have, you know, we, she canned a lot of stuff. And there was an assembly line for canning green beans, That's and the right, kids right, each right. had their spot. That's right, yeah. yeah. And what, can we go play ball? No. Today it's canning beans. Bam, 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 bam. Then they can go play ball. Yeah. 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 My son who still remembers that old grinder. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had grind apples all the time. <laughs> okay. That was stolen. Yeah. <laughs> and the coloner. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't have, we didn't have a stone, you know. <laughs> okay. But, so do you understand what the God is telling us now? Trust in me. Entrust your life to my care. Something very important we need to remember as we grow older. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Because we have a tendency how to hoard things. Oh, I can't get rid of it. But you haven't used it for three years. Come on. Mm -hmm. Somebody else could have used it. But then again, we're not trusting God to right. provide for us. And you're close enough because I didn't even. I, I was. I not wasn't directly affected by the uh, depression, but my folks were, and so they could save stuff because my dad, being a mechanic, could say. I can use that someday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he would use it someday. Yeah. 
And they knew where it was. And they knew what they were. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, that's what the problem is. Now I never know where it is, and I gotta go replace it, and then I find it. Well, see, that's what I do. It's why I need to get rid of it, because I can't go find it. So it what's the sense of me keeping it? Somebody else could So, anyway. And I gotta trust God in it. Yeah. Then you have to buy it again. Yeah. Trusting, yeah, but I figured somebody else needed And trusting God is a hard thing. We, I, an example I used to use with the kids was I'd say, uh, why don't you come up, turn, face that way, and fall straight back. I'll catch you. And you know what we usually do when we do that? We lean back a little bit and catch yourself. As soon as we put out the leg, that's not faith anymore. <laughs> faith is just letting go and letting God. And, and using our wisdom and other stuff too. But still, that, that process. Okay? So now, your words. And now he's talking to the people again. Your words have been hard against me, says the Lord. And you would think, people say, well, God, your words are hard against me. But he says, starts to but you're, you're the one who started this all. Your words have been hard against me, says the Lord. But you say, how have we spoken against you? You have said, it is vain to serve God. What is the profit of keeping his charge or walking, of walking as in mourning before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the arrogant blessed. Evildoers not only prosper, but they put God to the test and they escape. Now, wait till eternity. <coughs> yes. Wait, wait till, till eternity, eternity comes. comes. Yes. <laughs> but we feel that way sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we wonder why they prosper and why we don't. We see it, but we yet, struggle and, we do. and you know we struggle. But I figure I have a lesson to learn, and I'm holding tight to God. But they don't have that. And something comes along and smacks them, and they feel all this despair hitting them. And you know what? They might as well enjoy their time here on this earth. Because man, hell's hell going to slap them hard. <laughs> but, but it's Go interesting. The <laughs> <laughs> They're tough. But what's interesting is, see, he doesn't promise us comfort either. No, he doesn't. And that's the problem, because, so follow, take up your cross and follow me. It's going to be burdensome to follow the Lord in a way. Because I'm going to be the outcast. Look at the burden he carried. I agree with you. I, I know, but we, we get in this position. We see. You know, because all of a sudden, well, this, that's not fair. That's not fair I got sick. Joe Blow over there is drinking all the time, and I'm the one that got liver cancer. Yeah. What the, yeah. what's going on here? You get to go to heaven first. Huh? You get to go to heaven first. <laughs> <laughs> That's the blessing. You know? That's the blessing. But I just say, we, we start analyzing stuff. You know, my wife has got this thing. Whenever there's some something that arises, she'll say, I, want, I wonder if it's what we ate. I said, I like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to deal with this. I just want to eat. <laughs> but I, but, but I, I, I guess I'm just saying, we, we, we struggle. Uh, with hard work, does hard work always pay off? I mean, Jerry's got a, Jerry, I did that now, oops. Loretta has got a brother. He's uh, 69, and he is as thin as can be. He still works full time on the farm. He carries three big white pails on both sides of feed. He never has a day off. 120 milk cows. Yeah. He's still got corn in the field. That would be very good way. You know, and, and blessed be what he says is, oh, yeah, I don't know, these people, they don't have to go to an exercise center if they would just work once they get in. <laughs> and he's right. <laughs> but, but, I mean, he doesn't complain. And there's a guy, he, as a farmer, most farmers have rain gauges. He says, so the, the, uh, the, another farmer will say, well, how much did it rain out by you? I don't know. I don't measure it. The good Lord gives me what he needs. He knows I need. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, um, that's the concept, okay? So, but the struggle. And then you remember, I think we looked this up when we said before. Psalm 23 was this great, or 73 is this great psalm. Because the psalmist says, wait a minute, I followed you. And the people who aren't following you, 
are better off than I am. And it's the beginning of the psalm. Then, then it says, then the psalmist went to the house of the Lord, and he saw it from God's perspective eternally. And he finds out the wicked will lose life forever. You will have it eternally. And it's all about that. It's really about the long haul. Lazarus and the rich man. What? Lazarus and the rich man. Lazarus the rich man, too? Well, think about it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. 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 same thing. I mean, Lazarus toiled, but he never made much. But the yeah. rich man had it all, but then he lost Oh, right. Life. Luke 16, you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And then, then, then he couldn't even get a drop of water, the right. rich man. Yeah. 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 So that concept. So and I, so I was. Aren't Christian funerals great? Mm -hmm. I think so. You so. celebrate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's where the rubber beats the road. You know. They're in heaven. So I can be sad. I miss them, but I really can't be too sad. I, like Jerry, I I, I I could beat her in anything sports wise. <laughs> I put on Paris ice skates once. I never ice skated. She ice skated all her grade school year. I said, let's have a race. I beat her. I didn't know how to stop. I hit the snow bank. <laughs> <laughs> but I always said, do you know what? She won the important race. Yes. She's in heaven already. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we rejoice in that. Okay. Where are we at? 16, right? Mm -hmm. All right, I got this. Oh, okay. 16. And then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. Now, he's pointing to some who are attentive, okay? The Lord paid attention and heard them. And a book of remembrance was written before him of who, those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in the day when I make up my treasured possession and I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves him. Then once more you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. Okay, so first of all, how are these people described here? Verse 16, those who are saved fear the Lord. They spoke with one another. And um, they held high his name, who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. So, what is fear the Lord? It's not to be afraid, it's not to be afraid it's not to but to respect, respect, awesome, respect, awesome, awesome, revere, revere worship. You know, it's always, to me, it's like, I think I've drawn that heart for you, right, too. We put a heart and a chair in the middle. It's saying, Jesus sits right on the heart, the throne. Everything's about him. Okay? It's all about him. And so, when we revere God, think about how that changes. Will you rob God with your offerings? Oh, no. I respect him highly. Okay? <clears throat> And, and, and I give to him. I, I, I'm, I'm his vessel to glorify him. Um, yeah. So there, there, there was that Ephesians 2, I think I referred to it last week. For by grace you are saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of good works, lest any man should boast. We are God's workmanship, created in Jesus Christ to do good works. So we always remember 8 and 9, because that's, we're saved by grace alone, not by works of law. But 10 says we are his workmanship. And that is, the concept is he has made us this vessel and glazed us with his forgiveness that we can be on a mantle to glorify his name. Who made that person? God did. That he gets the glory. That's fearing him. Uh, it's, it's like a work, uh, workmanship would be music too. You have a composed piece of music that can inspire many. Uh, we are God's workmanship created in Jesus Christ to do good works. And so here, as he's saying this, he says, who feared the Lord spoke with one another. They were encouraging one another. They were helping one another. They were building one another up. Um, 
One of the things my mom taught me, I, bless, I, I think about my mom a lot. One of the things my mom, my mom taught me, she said, Roger, when you get married, make sure you say thank you when your wife makes a meal. Because nowhere in the Bible does it say she has to do that. And I, I say thank you almost all the time. Not all the time. If it's not so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just say, I'm not going to, I don't want to, I'm not that way, okay? I just won't say anything. I know Loretta said her dad used to say, when his, uh, her, her mother made something for her dad, he didn't like, he said, oh, that was okay, but you don't have to make that ever again. Sounded <laughs> 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 like Jim. <laughs> This is okay. okay, but we don't need that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but, but we need to encourage one another. It's, it's kind of, I, I, I talk to the teachers about this at St. Paul's. It's really interesting. We tell kids what they're not supposed to do. But do we ever help them in doing something that's creative? It's easy to say, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be doing that either. What am I supposed to do? Yeah. You get better response by telling them the great thing they did, because then they'll keep repeating that. <laughs> right, right, right. And compliments go a long way. Even the dog, my dog. Well, I walked four miles yesterday, and I, I walked. Two, I got two, two and a half. In. Oh no, that was that was four miles yesterday. The day before was three miles, but I walked three different times for that day. And it would, as soon as I say, "Good dog," or "Way to go, KG," she picks up the pace. So even a dog needs encouragement. So, and it, but think about that, you know. Yeah, mine helps pull me along. Okay. Step up more. But to, to encourage one another. And, and Galatians talks a lot about that. Encouraging each other. Let's, let's build each other up. And when you look at why people don't want to do things today, Lord, why? Because they get criticized for it. You're not doing it right. But then you say, well, you do it. Well, I don't want to do it. <laughs> but you're not doing it right. So I think that's a big problem. Show me how to do it right. Yeah. <laughs> show me how to do it right then. Otherwise so <laughs> fear and then, and to, then to um, esteem his name means to really honor it. Um, I, there was a, there was a, I, I had a poem once, and I, I'm sure I got it somewhere yet. But it was about an athlete. And it just said, uh, remember, you're a hero in a lot of kids' eyes. And whatever you do, they will imitate. Yeah. I remember the, kid, the boys played Little League Baseball. Boy, they were good at spitting. <laughs> they see it on television, the players spit. You know. Yeah. And then they, then they remember they had this round gum, I think a bye. It was like chewing tobacco, <laughs> the whole thing. <clears throat> or there was a, a country song. Did you, I remember, I don't know who did this. But um, he talks about, he picked up french fries and something for his child in the back seat. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and he had a break real hard and spilled, and yeah. the little boy said, I think I Yes. T yeah, word, yeah, yeah. and he said, "Where did you learn that?" He said, "Well, Dad, you're my about the roof. Oh, I want to be just like you." Like you. <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes on, and it says that all of a sudden he finds him praying one day. He said, "Where did you learn that?" Well, Dad, I learned it from you. I want to be a buckaroo just like you. So think about this when it's talking about esteeming his name. When we're when we tell, say we're a Christian, then. How we live defines what that means. Does that impress people? Does that show we know it's important to us? What does it say? See? And that's not, that's not to show off, it's just to glow. <laughs> You know, be who you are. There was a thing in Elder Mel years ago. Um, yeah, blossom, where blossom where you are planted. Blossom where you're planted. So, when, if you're going through a bad situation, God puts you in that bad situation to blossom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are to look, handle it a little bit differently than other people. Okay? Because you know who's got it all under control. Yes, sir. Psalm 130 
talks about fear of the God, fear of God, and it's basically a repentative, repentive type psalm, which is familiar to us. But uh, it starts out with verse three: If, you, if O Lord should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But then it follows up with, but with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and then it continues on. It says God has plenteous redemption for his people Israel and those who right. trust in him. So right. and we have reason to be fearful of him mm -hmm. in awe of him because right. of his great forgiveness. There's great forgiveness. That's the last say. No matter what anybody does or anything, he has the last say of what's going to happen. You better fear him. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not to be afraid, you know. No, it's not it's afraid. Kind of, it's just... Because I was, I was trying to teach this to our kids, I said, uh, I don't want you to do what's right only when I'm around. I want you to do what's right when I'm not around because you're a child of God. Not because you're going to get punished, <laughs> you know. And, 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 and so we don't do it because we don't have to be afraid, afraid like he's going to clobber us over the head, because he's forgiven us. But in the forgiveness, we want to please him now. However, he may allow us to, to bear the fruit of what we've done. Oh, yes. 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 Oh, yes. And it may not be the fruit we want. Oh, right. Sometimes, sometimes he would discipline us because of something we have done. Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not just because they're sitting yeah. in the world, but because of... Which is one reason you behave yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You don't have to do that. It always comes around. A reaction is a reaction. <laughs> yeah. I, we, we had a neighbor, and, and uh, his, he was an alcoholic. My kids knew it and uh, played with it, their, his son. And anyway, they, Grandpa always helped him out. Bail him out every time. You know, you get bust the car up, was drunk or whatever, always bail them out. And one day I remember telling the kids, I said, you know what's going on there, right? Yeah. I said, well, I want you to know this right now. If you do this, Mom and I are not bailing you out. We're not bailing you out because we love you. And if you do something wrong and you deserve to be punished for it, you have to pay the price. You have to, you have to pay the price. We will be there to love you. Mm -hmm. but we my, my, my parents, I remember them like saying something, and my grandma was there, she goes, don't worry, I'll bail you out. <laughs> yeah. She meant it. Not that she had to, but I remember. Well, I, I, I teased my son, I was a police officer, I said, so what happens to John if I'm speeding in Columbus? He said, I'll give you a ticket. <laughs> I said, good boy. <laughs> anyway, so, any other questions on that part? So you see what he's doing, though? He's, he's drawing them back to this concept because they forgot this. So he's really drawing them back to this. This has to be implemented, but he's drawing them back to understand, I love you with an everlasting love. And, and uh, as I was reflecting, I, I was going to refer to another uh, verse, but it's from Romans 8. Remember? Uh, nothing in all the world can separate us from the love of God as in Christ Jesus our Lord. So as difficult as it might be, and as maybe unloved as we might feel, keep your eyes on the cross. And you'll remember you're loved. Uh, there's a little song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, Look at His Wonderful Face. And the things of life will go strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. And when I, I'm just talking for myself, and when I get down, it's because I've lost my focus from the cross. Um, and that's not, not a good thing. Um, but that you recognize it is. Right, right. Uh -huh. Where did I put that? Oh, yeah, I put... Uh, we should live in the shadow of the cross and in the sunshine of re res the resurrection. That's what we need to do. L live in the shadow of the cross and in the sunshine of the resurrection. So that we're more than conquerors. There was a beautiful, I, I still have it. So if you have my AS cancer, because I, I thought it was so cool. There was a lady, it was in Lutheran. I think it was in Thriving, or it was Aid Association for Lutherans, way back when. This was, I mean, this is an antique article. But there was a lady, and she had three small children. 
She was diagnosed with cancer. And she went through all the fear, anger, doubt, all that stuff. And she was really mad at God. And then one day she read uh, Isaiah 43, 1. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Mm -hmm. And when she was in anger, she said, I want to see my kids grow up. I want to take care of them. I want to love them. I want to see their adulthood. But oh, you're stripping me of it. And then she read that passage, and she said, you know, I'd still like to see my kids grow up. But if I don't, it's okay. Because then I'm going to heaven. The name of the article, either way I'm a winner. Right. Either way, I can't lose. You're not like a cub. Chicago Cub fan. <laughs> you always win. <laughs> Are you a Chicago Cubs fan? Oh, I just, I know. I mean, for those years they sat there, oh, they didn't win, you know. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go to the, uh, let's see if I can this all. Yes. Oh, I know, I, I know what I'm going to look better close at this yet. That's right. So what is the Book of Remembrance? The Book of Life. It's referenced, it's referenced about seven times in the scripture. The, the one that we're probably most familiar with is uh, Revelation 2015. It's in the Old Testament elsewhere, too. Yeah. But 2015 is probably the one that we're most familiar with. And uh, Revelation 2015 says, If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life... <laughs> He goes to hell. We can all get saved. What are they working on? I don't know, but somebody was out here yesterday. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, while we pause for just a brief moment, um, so what would be the next thing you want to study? Since we got a little break. Here. Is there anything specific you'd like to study the next time? That's the summer, I think, right? Oh, that's a bright idea. <laughs> God will provide. God will provide. <laughs> See, even if it's not raining now. Well, I see it to be dark and cloudy and raining. And was... <laughs> so, anyway, think about that. If you've got a, something you want to really look at or study. Maybe the preschool is planning some type of a drill, you know, to let Christy go down there. Oh, no, I'm just... Yeah. <laughs> What's Kyle doing with those well, kids? Well, maybe he's teaching them about darkness and the light of yeah. darkness. That would be very good. We just got the book of light. Okay. <laughs> it's the light. Yeah. Light. Yeah, and, there, and there's no need for the sun or the moon or artificial lighting. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Yes, it's 20 verse... Uh, what did I say? I can't... 2015. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. And so I was trying to think, so how would you talk about the book of life and for an illustration? And I thought maybe a, like a, you make a reservation at a restaurant. Okay. So Jesus has made a reservation in the He's book of life for us, and that is yeah, right. the marriage feast, right? See, the restaurant, it all ties together, okay? It ties together, but the, the, mm -hmm. that he has reserved this place for us, and that reservation cannot be canceled. As we, and it's based on faith. We, we are because of faith, okay? But the concept is, again, he's trying to say, my love is constant. That's all you need to know. And in love, I have called you by name. I have made you my own. I'm his child. Okay, very comforting. There is a, yeah, in, in uh, where Loretta works, uh, behind the nurse's station, they've got doctors doing, a picture of doctors doing surgery. And above that is Jesus looking down, watching over everything. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. That's good. Yes, there's a lot of doctors at Bremen, not everyone, 
a doctor said, we'll pray with you. I know Loretta will pray with the patients before surgery. She'll say, could I have a prayer with you? And um, so There's a lot of faith going on, which is kind of cool. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Okay, so that's the remembrance. Then it says, they will be mine and I will spare them. So, I was thinking about a passage there, and you got that one from Revelation 2.10. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life. You trust in me. I give, I provide, I, this is a free gift, to you the gift of everlasting life. Okay? And then, the last part here is, we will, we, then we will see the proper judgment. Then the uh, one uh, that will see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between the one that serves God and the one that doesn't. So, this is in Christian, but we could say, well, just wait, you'll get yours. <laughs> that, that wouldn't be a proper thing to say, but anyway, the idea is, see, we are, we're impatient, and I, and I, I guess I'd probably... Watching my son in, in, uh, as a superior court judge, this process of getting, doing justice is a, it's a, it's a time consuming and a long process. But God says, in the end, I'll get it right for you. So just, I'm faithful, okay? And so, so what he's trying to do again is to remind these people, I've made you my own, okay? And they reject that. But for you and I, this is the thing. Remember, this is why we call our baptisms. I, he came to me, he baptized me, he made me new. I'm a child of his. Okay? Very, very special. And, and then taking communion to recall that, to remember that. Um, okay? Any questions on that? You doing fine? Oh, my eyes don't burn as much. I think the medicine kicked in this time. All right, four through six, four, one through six. In the last verse, we've kind of pretty much covered. Now, okay, this is interesting because this is where this comes in now. He's talking about the ministry of John the Baptist, and he concludes by talking about Judgment Day. Because you see, John the Baptist is the beginning of the New Testament event for the church. And it ends with the church assembly in heaven. Yeah. Okay. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all the evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. So he's talking about that final judgment. All right? And in fact, in, in uh, Peter, it says, talks about it that the first time God's judgment came, it was by what means? Blood. 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 Next one is by fire. Everything will be consumed as we know it. Okay? But, verse 2, for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. Okay, so just, I, I, for our sakes, I think, to understand that that really can describe a Christian who goes to heaven. I have brought them healing, and they have their youth. That's, the, again, the, the comfort, okay? It is the comfort. Uh, if, you, if we get healed on earth from some sickness, we're going to get sick again. But when we get healed by God eternally, no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more death, for the old order of things has passed away. Okay, you shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. Uh, okay, um, I, let's see, i got to look here once. Let's look at two verses. Uh, first of all, what, what happens to the unbeliever? I picked two un uh, ones that we normally don't look at. Isaiah 131. Just because we don't normally, I could pick other passages, but this was just 
Isaiah 131. Oh, whoa. Let there be light. <laughs> God doth provide. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know how you ever fish at God. I, well, I vision him up there. And he does something like this, and he smiles. He says, see how I put this together? You're, you're talking about providing, and I'm showing you I provide. So, I still got one up on you. <laughs> okay, so anyway, Isaiah 131 describes the, those unbelievers. And the strong shall become tinder, and his work a spark. And both of them shall burn together, with none to quench them. That's talking about, like in Lazarus account, we brought that up earlier, the unquenchable fire, okay? And uh, I've, sh I've shared that with people, like, I, God, I'll say, uh, well, Pastor, I, you know, I know this religious stuff, but I want to go to hell because that's where my friends are, my drinking <laughs> buddies. <laughs> and and, I, and I, I actually said this to him. I said, well, okay, I get that. I want you to understand two things about hell. First of all, there are no friends. There's a weeping of gnashing of teeth. No beer. Sen and there's, secondly, there's <laughs> nothing to drink. <laughs> you know, that would be right there. <laughs> well, I, see, because they think they're going to go down there and party, you know? So, okay, and then the other one I want to look at, this is for the Christian, is Isaiah 60. This talks about heaven. And it, it sounds a lot like uh, Revelation. Isaiah 60. Verses 8 through 22. Isaiah 60, um, 18 through 22. 18? Yeah, it, it goes on before, but I just I started 18. And this is... Uh, uh, I don't, so this is God's State of the Union address about the end. How's that? Well, I know. I'm saying God's state of the union address about heaven, okay? This is why I'm, I just kind of added that. You can do it. <laughs> Violence shall no more be heard in your land. Devastation or destruction within your borders. You shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The sun shall be no more, your light by day. Nor the brightness shall the moon give you light. But the Lord will be your everlasting light. And your God will be your glory. Your sun shall no more go down. Nor your moon withdraw itself. For the Lord will be your everlasting light. And your days of mourning shall be ended. Your people shall all be righteous. They shall possess the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I might be glorified. The least one shall become a clan, and the smallest one a mighty nation. I am the Lord. In its time, I will hasten it. So there you have a description, and if you think about that, it parallels very well Revelation. But the, the comforting pictures there, okay? Um, with kind of the, the violence that goes on in our world today and all this other stuff, and saying, hey, the day of peace is coming. Uh, and remember, he's the Prince of Peace, right? So, um, so then the admonition, um, oh, and it says, then the, the judgment again, in verse 3, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Okay, so the evil will be lost. The believer in Christ will be saved. And the saddest thing about that day is that nobody had to be in hell. Okay. The, the, the people that go to hell were redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. They're there because of unbelief. That's sad. Well, I guess. I guess you could say that. Or ignorance or... You know, I yeah, for some, I mean, I, I feel so blessed because I, I was raised in a Christian. I didn't... You know, I really... There was not a time that I doubted uh, the existence of Jesus. Yeah. So, anyway, 
So now the so what comes, okay? So he's got this, he went through this whole cycle. And so now, uh, as my one professor in, in uh, preaching said, if people hear a good sermon but they ask so what, they don't know what the answer is, then you wasted your whole time. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and rules that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Okay. So what does the concept of remember mean here? Because we're not saved by what we do, but what is the concept of remembering here? Remember that I saved you, I redeemed you, and keep my laws. Okay? Um, I was thinking about that. It, what is, remember the Bible verse, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you revere me, you will keep my commandments. I was told the other day, I, I, when I went to Men's Bible State Breakfast at uh, St. Paul's yesterday morning, and they, they, uh, I was talking to the uh, head elder after, and he was telling me that in some town, they're thinking about giving licenses to illegal immigrants. They did it here. Because... Yeah. They've done it here. They, they yeah. done. He said, I think they're doing it, talking about it in Bremen, they, they uh, delayed it, but he said, they said, because they drive anyway. And I thought, oh. So if I steal, stealing should become legal because people are doing it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So then all of a sudden you've taken the law of God and you apply if you change it, well, because people are doing this, they're going to do it. In, I've heard that about abortion. You know, we, we, we need to have legal abortion because other people, otherwise people get a bad abortion and they could die. So, so to prevent, yeah. To prevent the death of a mother, you're going to kill the people. So, so, see, so when it, it, if you know it, see, it lowers all the standards. Yeah. And, and, and God is saying, this is what you've done here. You yeah. see, you haven't given me your best. You haven't paid attention to the marriage right. relationship. Um, you know, you've done this and that bad. You've lowered the standard. But see, we have that, we have that in us, that law of God. People that out, out there don't have that. that. They don't have it, no. They don't have it. They don't have it. They they have it, they just don't believe it. Their conscience is being yeah. severed. So right, great. right. Well, and I, and I used to use that in, in, in confirmation class because, you know, there, there's a part where we talk about how do we know there's a God? Yeah. By creation, by conscience. Okay? And the problem with the conscience is it's like a two-by-four. <laughs> if I leave it out too long, it warps. Okay? And so, I mean, you know, I, I was raised with the old wooden tennis racket. Well, you had it, those brackets you put on it so it didn't oh, work. Right, yeah. Well, so, the, so for us, it's the law of God. We have to keep in check with the law of God. But we, we can warp our conscience, mm -hmm. you see? And that's what happens in the world today. And you, you, you talk to these people, and they don't talk about the law of God, except maybe to say, well, that's old-fashioned. <laughs> You haven't progressed with time, as if time is making things better. I mean, like we're talking about the, anything you buy today, it was made better years ago. You know, um, it might be more efficient today, but boy, you bought something years ago, it can last. That's because it was made in America, not China. So anyway, so he's saying, remember, keep my word before you. When you do something, when you're thinking about something, check it out in my word. And it's easy. You've got cross-references. If you have a uh, Thompson Chain Reference Bible, you can look up topics, and you can find Bible verses. It's not hard. You can even go on your phone and say, what Bible passages speak of, I don't know, they'll put some on. Now, those who did that, I don't know, but, but you yeah. might find something. I'm just saying it's a lot easier, and, and, and we have to confront Satan with the Word of God. Because Satan will confront us with the Word of God and say, did he really say? Yeah, right. Okay. And we have to say, you bet he did. Truly, truly, I say unto you, he said it. You know? Um, the same people that reject the law of God want the law that we know to be really strictly enforced. Certain, yeah, certain aspect, right. Yeah, so therefore, 
How do you do that? I mean, if yeah. you don't believe what God says, how can you believe what I don't know? I, I don't know either. I, it's a confusing thing. I have been much confused as I've talked to people more and more about stuff like this. Yeah. Just... Yeah. Um, because basically now what it happened, basically people are, the general public is saying, uh, Jesus died for everybody's sins. So, so if I'm going to heaven no matter what. Right. So I can do whatever. So I can do what, and they don't necessarily give themselves permission, but they'll say, "Well, but I, no, I don't have to tell you what to believe, or you to tell me what to believe." You know, you're your own person. So I've got. So basically, what they're saying is, I write my own Bible. Jesus, This is what I'm going to do. And when you present the Bible passage to them, they've never looked that up. And then they, I don't know that they look it up after you do. Which probably not, but anyway, it's still our job to present the word of God. Okay, it is our that's our job, yeah. and we need to remember that. So then the last part there is, is just talking about uh, 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 John the Baptist again in verse five, and then six, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. And so he always holds that thing is, I'm the ultimate judge. Okay. But praise God, I guess this is good for us. Praise God, he knows our heart. <laughs> okay. Sometimes we wish he may not want to know our heart. <laughs> but uh, anyway, any, any final thoughts? Or yeah. The remembrance, uh, there's a description in the Lutheran Study Bible that refers to remember which is that part of verse 4, remember the law of my servant Moses, but the remember is based on the Hebrew term, I don't know how to say it, Z-A-K-A-R, Zakar. 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 But to recall and, or keep in mind, and it said here that God could not forget his covenant with his people. Right. And so we can be assured that he's going to remember us. Right. He's the one that's doing most of the remembering, but he's asking right. us to also remember his love for right. us. Mm -hmm. Right. And even people, I, I had one lady really had bad Alzheimer's. And I remember saying to her, Jesus loves me. And a tear came down her cheek. I don't think she could tell you who I was, but that little part. Mm -hmm. just a, And it's very interesting that all these... And, and that's part of the blessing of having um, more... Uh, similar worship services mm -hmm. can that work out so that you have hymns you can sing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like I love the one, Hold all thy cross before my closing eyes shine through the gloom and point my eyes. Heaven's morning breaks and earth's fade, shadows fade. In life and death, O oh Lord, abide with me. We pray. Good and gracious Lord, we thank you for the time we've had together for being able to gather around your word and to learn more about your love for us. We pray that your love would shape us and move us and mold us, that we may go forth from this day glowing with the love of Jesus Christ in our lives. We thank you so much for each other, and we thank you especially for the gift of Christ Jesus, our Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.